Good morning. It's good to be here and doing my live feed to say hello and talk about the scripture text. Um, I wasn't going to do it on Sunday, but I've had some requests and I'm, as I always said, like a bad comedian. So if you ask me to do more, I will. Um, so I'm going to work on two different ways to post something on Sunday. It won't be a live feed like this is, but um, we'll see if I can work it out. Okay, so on for today. Today is the Wednesday before Palm Sunday. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna look at the scripture text and see what Jesus and his disciples are up to before he enters Jerusalem uh, that last time of his life. So I guess the background is that um, Jesus has gone into Jerusalem probably every year of his life for Passover because that's what a good and faithful Jew did. And he's got followers now, people who are with him and uh, following him. And the implication is that they are learning to be like him. So, uh, hi, Laura. That's our implication, too, that we are striving to be like Jesus. That's why we're giving the name Christians. We were little Christ's. Not that any one of us on our own are Jesus, of course, or that we do the things that he did in terms of healing sick or feeding thousands, but that our behavior, the way that we live in the world, was to reflect the values that Jesus had and the way that he lived his life. So that, given the backdrop, um, we, hi Bev, uh, we have the disciples who are um, very human, and I always like the fact that they're very human because it makes me feel better. And um, they have seen Jesus and the power that he has. And I'm sure they've talked about the fact that they're going into Jerusalem, and Jesus has a huge following now. And of course, Jerusalem is the center of religious and political power, which um, for Jewish folks is one and the same. If you were very strong and religious uh, power and um, influence, then you were also politically connected because, again, for uh, Jerusalem, for Israel, it was the same thing. So uh, James and John, who were Zebedee's sons, saw the power that was whirling around Jesus. And they thought, we got a plan. So here we are, we're in Mark 10. This is again, right before Palm Sunday, right before Jesus goes uh, to enter Jerusalem for that last time in his life. <clears throat> so, and I'm reading from the message. James and John, Zebedee's sons, came up to Jesus. Teacher, we have something we want you to do for us. What is it? I'll see what I can do. Arrange it, they said so that we will be awarded the highest places of honor in your glory. One to sit at your right and one on your left. Okay, just a brief aside here. When they're asking this, they're assuming <laughs> that Jesus is going to come into, again, political power, that he's gonna start ruling Jerusalem, that he's gonna kick out all the priests and even kick out Rome. And so they're looking for um, the places of honor and so Jesus' response is, you have no idea what you're asking. Are you capable of drinking the cup I drink or being baptized in the baptism I'm about to be plunged into? Sure, they answered, why not? <laughs> Jesus said, come to think of it, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized in my baptism. But as awarding places of honor, that's not my business. There are other arrangements for that. When the other 10 heard of this conversation, they lost their tempers with James and John. Jesus got them together to settle things down. You've observed the godless rulers, how they throw their weight around, he said. And when people get a little power, how quickly it goes to their head. It's not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. That is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve and not be served, and then to give away his life in exchange for many who were held hostage. 
Uh, that's James, uh, I think the 20, 32 through 41, 45 actually. But um, uh, it's always a good time to read scripture. But as I read this and I thought about what Mark does in terms of placing his gospel, he talks about these images of power. And of course, that's part of what we're encountering all during Holy Week is Jesus turning our concepts of power and influence on their head. That Jesus, who had the power of God, the, the life of God that none of us have ever had, chose to humble himself, chose to say, I am not looking for this power to wield over people. I am willing and wanting and desiring to give my life so that they can have life. We know all this, right? You're going, yeah, Mary, we got you. We, we're, we've we been Christians for more than a week. We're okay. But the disconnect comes for me, um, probably in my own life more than I'd like to admit, but you know how much easier we can see other people than ourselves. But Jesus said that we were to serve one another, that we were to be concerned about each other, that we were to live in humility and care for one another. And so here's my frustration, I'll name it, particularly for states that have rolled back um, masks used during this COVID time, um, that somehow that our Christianity doesn't inform so often how we're living day to day, that we feel comfortable with being mean to each other or telling something that isn't true or using someone for our own benefit, which I see all around the world. But, you know, a really simple thing is just to wear a mask. And I've said this before, and I know maybe I sound like a broken record, but, you know, it really isn't a tough concept that we're in the midst of a pandemic. We still are there. Again, incidents are rising because we have, when the virus gets into our body, it kind of gets wild and crazy, and it can create a variant on the virus, which of course is what's happened with the flu over hundreds of years, and is now gonna happen with this virus again as we go forward. And so for the next while, whether it's six months or a year or you know, whatever, we're still going to need to be wearing a mask around each other. We're still going to need to be keeping our distance from each other. We're still going to need to be being careful. Again, not because it's just the safest way to keep us well, but again, the safest way to keep others well. We are called, literally, Jesus is calling us to servant. Whoever wants to be great must become a servant. And he double downs on the language. Whoever wants to be first among you must be a slave. So it is that sense of Christianity that, I mean, besides my own little paranoia, that keeps me wearing a mask, that keeps me trying to consider other people's feelings. And plus, even when everyone can be vaccinated, even when you know, we think, okay, we're good. Everybody's gotten vaccinated. There's still folks who can't be. There's still people who, um, a friend who has too many allergies and too much going on in her system already, she can't do uh, a vaccination. Another young woman I know um, is already having trouble getting a baby. Uh, so she is concerned about what it would do to be able to get a baby, uh, to become pregnant. There's going to be enough people who can't do the vaccination that there's still going to be people who to go on and go forward. Then we need to be thinking about how are we serving one another and how are we in humility living with one another. And even when we're tired of it, which, amen, all of us are tired of the pandemic. All of us are just worn out. Um, by all that this stuff has done to our world. We are still called to be Christ's disciples. And too often we sound like James and John going, how are we going to be able to get the best seat? 
rather than what Jesus has called us to do. In the Gospel of John, Jesus lives this out by washing the disciples' feet. We know these stories. The people at my church know these stories because they have grown up in church and they know who Jesus was and what his life meant, not only to our lives here on earth, but our eternal lives. And so we know all this. We know about Jesus and we know about how he lived in such care and concern of all of those around him. And the thing that we're called to do is to live out of the moral code, the way of behavior that he lived. And again, we're not Jesus. As much as I would want to go and heal anyone who's suffering, to put their mind at ease, to put their heart at rest, I would love to do that. But I'm not Jesus. But I am called to live with the compassion that Jesus had. And again, humility. And to say, I wear a mask and I will continue to wear a mask. Today is my second vaccination. Yahoo! Um, and so I will continue to wear a mask. Not because now I'm concerned about me having it, but, or me living with the symptoms, which I pray that this gets rid of some of the symptoms that have hung on to me, but because, again, I could now have it cooking in my body and pass it on to somebody else. And I'll, I could say, well, you know, I'm not having to live with the symptoms. But the thing is, is that somebody else might if I don't wear a mask, if I don't keep my distance if I don't continue to be careful around everybody, because I don't know everybody's story. I know my people's story, a lot of them. I know those who are closest to me, but I don't know somebody I would encounter in a store who might be just living with lots of layers of illness and difficulty. So I guess here's my frustration, and I, that's where I started, is there are people around me, around this country who say, I'm tired of wearing it and so I'm not going to wear it anymore. And that might be their choice to say, I'm tired of it and I'm not gonna wear it anymore. However, <laughs> if you are a Christian and if you are trying to live as Christ lived, then our call is to be servant. Our call is to be concerned about one another. Jesus called us to slave, and I don't even think any of us like that word. But let's try servant, to be concerned about one another. Everything in this coming week, from Palm Sunday to Good Friday to Easter morning, speaks clearly of who Jesus was and what his priorities were. As a Christian, I say, that Jesus' priorities are my priorities. Don't always get there. <laughs> Don't always live as well as I should, but I know what I am supposed to be doing. Again, it's exactly like growing up as a kid. You know, you know you're supposed to make your bed every morning. You know you're supposed to get the dishes put away. You know you have chores in the house. You know that there's things that your parents expect of you, whether it's doing your homework or whatever it was. And sometimes we didn't do it. Sometimes we were just lazy, as my mom would say, or sometimes we were distracted, or sometimes um, we just thought we could get out of it. <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> but today, as adults, we still have things that Christ is expecting of us. And maybe the good and the bad news is that God sees us through everything. God holds us up. And I guess the good news is, is that there's not a lot of judgment about that. At least I don't think there is. I think there's a lot of love and a lot of encouragement. And a lot of, <laughs> if you just listen to me, Jesus is saying, things are gonna go better. Things are gonna go in a more caring way. The story after this one, if you read through the rest of um, 
the gospel, the 10th chapter of Mark before we get to Palm Sunday morning. The next story is Jesus uh, healing a blind man. And the biblical scholars will say, the reason that the blind man healing is inserted is that um, the people who follow Christ often are blind to what they're doing. So <laughs> having that as the setup, having that as what our scriptures as Christians are telling us to do, we know what we are to be doing. We know that we are to be caring for our world and to endure even when it's difficult. Uh, the Romans 5 passage that I love, you know, suffering creates endurance and endurance creates patience and patience creates a wonderful deep character in God's love. So that's who we are today. And I pray that, um, again, my little rant uh, it's not hurting anybody's feelings. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I want to challenge us. I want to challenge us that um, even when you're tired of doing the things that we need to do to stop this pandemic from continuing, again, airborne illness, cover airborne things, <laughs> both your nose and your mouth, to continue to do that. Even when we think, oh, it's not that important anymore. Oh, we're better. Uh, it takes a while. It took three years for the 1919 uh, flu pandemic to be gotten under control. With us, with the science we have, and with the quick rollout of vaccination, it could be shorter for us. Yay! <laughs> But we're still in the midst of pandemic. Not anything any of us have ever seen before. So we live as Christians in this reality. I need to live as a Christian in this reality. Again, maybe if you're watching, you're thinking, Mary, I'm not signing on for that. I don't have to. Fine. But if you have said you're a Christian, then the way to convince the world that Christ truly is alive that our story happened, Jesus was the Son of God, is to live in a way that convinces others of that. Our life, one of the phrases I always like is, our life may be the only Bible that people ever read. So, here we are. People of the Word, people of the way, people who believe in and follow the way of Jesus Christ as Christians. When James and John said, we want to sit at the good seats, Jesus said, okay, let me show you. It's at the back of the bus. Uh, let me show you that it's in the way of service. Not sitting on the grand podium and fancy chairs, but down in the dirt where we find people who need help and healing and love. That's what I'm reading in the scripture. <laughs> That's what is challenging me each day to live in a way that convinces others that I believe not only in Jesus Christ and place my life and my eternal life in his care, but today, today I will try to make decisions that reflect his love, his compassion, that he lived out of God's grace to all of us. So, like I said, I'm gonna to try to post something on Sunday. We'll see how it goes. Uh, ask your prayers as I have my second shot. Um, I know sometimes folks get sicker. And um, yay, looking forward to church on Sunday uh, and those who can be in person. Take care.